What are the worst double standards that don't involve gender or race? Breaks during work. Acceptable for smokers. Questionable for non. I used to work in a computer shop where everyone smoked except me and the manager. Every couple weeks on a Friday, he would tap me on the shoulder after lunch and we would go play video games for the rest of the day. He considered it our accumulated smoke breaks. I started smoking because I worked with three friends at a smoothie stand in a mall, and they would constantly take breaks while I worked. So I, being a dumb 19 year old decided to join them and not breathe it into my lungs then I started buying packs. Soon enough I was smoking a pack a day. I quit 2 years ago. Saves me $300 or so a month, and I don't cough up disgusting mucus with black spots anymore. I'm 31 now. Think of all the booze you can afford with $300 a month. Seriously, I hate working food service especially. No breaks ever unless you're a smoker. Literally everyone my age that smokes started for this reason. It isn't the worst double standard. Far from it, but it's annoying. It's about the workers who start early and leave early versus the workers who start late and leave late. Let's say I start to work at the office at 6am while my co-worker starts at 8am. If I leave at 2pm and he leaves at 4pm, we would have accomplished about the same amount of work. For some reason, I'd be the one who's tagged as lazy because I'll leave the job earlier. It didn't happen to me, but I witnessed it a few times during my career. I don't think either of you are lazy, if anything, I think it's a good thing to do. You're there early in case anything needs immediate attention first thing in the morning, and they are there late in case any late minute tasks come along. In theory, I used to work flexi time in an office that was officially open 7am to 5pm. The supervisor was a total idiot. He would roll in at 11am on a good day, then go and get some food or make a cup of tea. He'd come back and phone a friend for half an hour before taking a well deserved break. Then he'd come back at 1 2 p.m. and ask someone to help because he had so much to do he wasn't going to get it done. I got in at 7, got straight on with work, took my half hour allotted break when convenient for my co-workers. Then if I had got all my work done I'd leave at 3.30. I regularly stayed later than that as there was an insane workload and I needed the money. And dickhead supervisor would say off already. Are we? Alright for some yeah. Alright because I've been here since you were probably rolling in from the pub. I used to work nights by choice, which meant that occasionally I'd knock off work and decide to have a glass of wine before bed. For me, that was about 8 in the morning, when my housemates at the time were getting up to go to their 9 to 5s. The reaction from people was insane. For me, it seemed way weirder to sleep during the day, wake up in the late afternoon, then get dressed and go out for dinner and drinks with them, which basically meant that I was having wine for breakfast. But from their perspective, that made perfect sense. Night work is weird. I used to work third shift, which I loved. But yet, a lot of people can't fathom their morning being your night. I used to have a beer after work around 8am and someone made a serious comment about me having a possible problem. Yet, yeah, the problem is night shift. My boss has brought me into his office repeatedly to tell me I don't do enough work and that we are all swamped right now. My department is short staffed. Yet he has no issue sitting at his desk watching movies all day long. Yet if I sit for 5 minutes to shoot off an email I am wasting my time. Good luck to him when you quit. I've bitched to my boss several times that I didn't have enough work, especially when they reduced my workload. He tried to look into the back end of things to try and quantify how much work I was doing. In a team of around 16 people or so, I was doing the third most. What the fuck is everyone else doing? I'm on reddit half the day. Half of the characters in Dragon Ball Z have tried to kill Goku at some point, but whenever some new person shows up and tries to kill Goku, the others get mad. My cat is allowed on the office desk and my 100 LB tank of a dog is not. My dog would like you to know that this is a terrible injustice and that he would like to file a report with the proper authorities. I hate people who cut me off while driving. But it's fine for me to cut off others. We judge ourselves by our intentions, others by their actions. Michael Scott. That must be the smartest thing Michael Scott ever said. George Carlin said something like, You ever notice anyone driving slower than you is an asshole and anyone driving faster than you is a maniac? 
In court the police are assumed to always be telling the truth, and their word carries more weight than a civilian. Logically, the officer's job and reputation is on the line, and if a person is disputing something they reported, the likelihood of it affecting the career and livelihood of the individual refuting the report is less than the officer. Therefore, the officer has greater impetus to lie in court to protect his reputation. I was on a jury last year, and it was insane to me that the police collected almost zero evidence, even though they admitted that collecting evidence was a major part of their job. The entire case was just three police officers getting on the stand and saying, I know we didn't collect any evidence, but we're the police so you should believe us. They only collected one piece of actual evidence. Although to be fair, once we were in the jury room most of us were of the opinion that we weren't going to believe anything just because a police officer said it. The days of the public believing the police are pretty much over. Restaurants don't give me a toy when I order a meal. Classic ageism. I'm a British working class young gentleman, worked part time through college and university in a canteen for a factory. When the working class people factory workers, come to the till with their food in a container, they open it, show me, and I then make sure I charge them for everything inside. When the upper, slash middle class people, office staff, come to the till there's a British and spoken social contract that prevents me from asking them to open their container so that I can check their food. So the office staff just leave it shut and tell me what they have. If you're working class there's a good chance you're a liar or a thief and by social etiquette you have to provide evidence that you're not. If you're upper class then it's breaking social etiquette for someone to even suggest it. Man the cashier at my work cafeteria doesn't give a fuck. I firmly believe she would charge our CEO his zero dollars. 35 for his pat of butter for his baked potato. This might be an extremely niche one. But I work in a psych area of the year and we get a lot of dementia patients from nursing homes who need to be evaluated for their aggression 9 times out of 10. The person got pissed off at some totally normal thing and got mad. One lady last week got sent in because she got frustrated during an art class and threw her crayon down on the table. You would never send a normal patient to the damn hospital for that. You'd tell them to take a chill pill or go take a walk. I know some people get mean and nasty with dementia but damn they are allowed to have a normal spectrum of emotions and allowed to get upset at shit or be annoyed by things. Edit. I should say that it's so typical of the healthcare field to just throw stones at each other and not acknowledge that all of healthcare in the US is a hot mess and we're all just doing our best. My bad. Love USNF folks. Yeah, I had a fairly normal relationship with my parents until I took an Asperger's and IQ test battery. The moment they found out I was mildly autistic every time I got mad at something it became a temper tantrum and every time I wasn't smiling ear to ear it was mood swings. The worst thing about it is they said it's so smugly and with such belief that I'm right and your own experiences are irrelevant that it actually did start to piss me off. It's the mental health version of you mad bro. Like. I was just mildly irritated that my teacher held the class in, but now that you've snidely insinuated that I have no control over my emotions I'm actually getting a little pissed off. People have no idea how condescending it is to pretend that they know more about you than you do. Spend 5 hours in a single night binge watching Netflix? That's fine. Everybody needs to veg out every now and then. Spend 5 hours in a single night playing video games? You need to grow up and stop wasting your time with that stuff. My parents do this shit. When I get done with classes and play Rocket League for a while I need to study more but if I'm watching a movie then everything is just fine. Age is a huge one. At my old job I could do an entire transaction while an older co-worker watched so she could learn how herself and she'd get a thank you from the customer and not me. Or they'd ask sometimes if I was the one learning. When a high school teacher says to the class the bell doesn't dismiss you, I do but then also scold students for being late. If the bell isn't enough to tell the students you're allowed to leave now, then the bell also shouldn't be enough to tell the students you need to go to your class now. This didn't annoy me so much when I was in school, but now that I'm a full-fledged adult it bothers me more. The bells happens at predictable times. They signify that class is beginning and ending. If the students are expected to manage their time well enough to make it to class on time, the teacher is expected to manage time well enough to let them go when the bell rings. Parents will always take ultimate responsibility for your accomplishments, but when you fuck up, they didn't raise you like that. 
my sister would say when she had to wait until she was 16 to get a cell phone but I got one at 14. I got one at 11 or 12 because I used to walk home alone and no one expected a kid to have a cell phone and call for help at that age. Don't know if you can say the same thing today, but I was the coolest kid in school until smartphones came out and I still use the dinosaur. It's super rude to ignore recruiters or HR when they contact you or try to set up something. Then you're ignored for about 95% of applications you submit. Oh sure, when George Washington shoots British people, he's considered a great man and the father of America, but when I do the same thing, I'm wanted for first degree murder. This fucking world we live in, man. You spend too much time on your computer, spends as much time watching TV, slash using iPad, slash smartphone, slash or at a sports bar. Thank you for watching. Check out my Patreon to get early access to future videos. Every patron gets a special thank you message in my videos. If the video slapped, remember to leave a like and subscribe for more videos every single day. See you tomorrow.